Second on the card is a maiden plate and it's over 1,200 meters. In this race, we have an odds on favorite. Is it odds on the last time I looked? No, yeah, it is, seven to 10. It was Beeman-esque for the Michael de Cox table that Gavin Lorene is riding. Second choice, Darren Burrows. Um, Ethan Ator is at five to two. And then you've got nine, Mizzen Sale at the third choice at six to one. It's 10 to one and better about the others. So we start with a favorite. I mean, that was a fair debut. The form line seems to be solid at the moment. Uh, definitely, Clyde. That's the form line. Um, the one horse did disappoint just the other day of Marshall's uh, ex puller horse. I can't remember the name, but uh, he did run second at four to ten just the other day. But the rest of that form line solid. I mean, Sovereign State won three on the trot. This horse was staying on very strongly at the finish. And I said, whenever this horse runs again, he's got to be the right horse. So I'm going best bet, be Manesque. And then Ethanate has been gulded, rested and gulded. And they think a lot of this horse, he could show that natural improvement. Okay. But we're going to have a strike, I take it, on this horse, uh, Beamanesque, Mr. Marie? You are. Are we, are we not? Oh, it's the opening leg of the bar, but I'm bankering him. Okay. You know, this horse, so, Ethanate, a cloud. Obviously, yes. Darren's touched on the fact that he's been rested and gulded. He's just been doing things wrong in running. Uh. He's come to the track with a huge reputation. And we we certainly haven't seen the best of him. Uh, okay. But yes, the favourite's good enough to bank in the bar pot. The form line's all there. You know, he, on debut, you might have started 12 to 1, but if you heard the pre-race comments, they were very upbeat. So it's not as if he ran above expectations. So I'm going to go 617, yeah, Clyde. 617. Okay. So, well, Ethanator represents the main defender we now good at is that form line, but... Uh, we're on, I'm on, the bipods are on this horse, Beeman-esque, surely. Let's take a look. Here's the bipod for the day, Daryl Darren's bipod. Oh, we've got one or two bipods here. Uh, How many bipods? bipods? We've got two. Banker six for Darren in the first leg and banker seven in the last leg of um, Darren's bipod. So what is that seven? That is, is that Apache Fighter? I think is banked at the back in race seven. Okay, that's Darren Burrows. And then Daryl Marie, let's do his. He's also bankering six with no more bankers after that. And that will cost 144. And the two bipods to consider everyone. Play well. Third race on the card. Let's get on to that. It's a graduation plate. This is come watch the rugby final at Turfentine on the 28th of October. And it's over 1,200 metres, this plated race. From a market Friday morning, um, Johan Janssen van Vieren's got a couple in here, one of which is Barbaresco. And that's the 22 to 10 favourite. Second choice is number eight, Red Hot Rose, who's priced up 28 to 10. And the third choice is Johan's other horse, number 10, Chasing Happiness, who's priced at 6 to 1. Doesn't end there, I don't think, because, uh, Darren, there's one more in under 10s. That's Lucky with the Larkstores, Dreamland, 8 to 1. What do you like? Um, Clyde, let's start off the, with the best weighted Red Hot Rose. Ran second in the nursery behind Mrs. Geriatrics, beaten ahead. Um, that was a solid effort. And last <laughs> time out, I don't know what happened, but she, she seemed to ease out of the race. Uh, 53 and a half, good draw. Uh, she should be right there. I wouldn't ignore a horse called Raven Black from the Crawford Stable. I know he's highly thought of, and I was impressed with the manner in which he beat Dreamland last time out. He faces Dreamland here once again, but he's a massive price and one to include. Barbaresco's got to be right there on his form. He's run off Sandringham Summit. His comeback run was a good win. Um, yeah, there's a couple with chances. The interesting thing about this race is they rate this horse Barbaresco. This is Rakesh yeah. has got shares in this horse, and I remember them saying they do think very highly of it. So it could be yeah, anything. Yeah, I mean, Clyde, he was deep in the red last time. Uh, he was expected to win. It was a workmanlike victory. He didn't mm. um, impress, but I like it. I like when horses do that. Um, there's a lot more to come with this horse. I don't know if, I, if I'm 100% correct in saying that Gavin might have said this horse needs gelding. Yes, he did. And, and we'll only see the best of him when he's gulded. But, I mean, he's done nothing wrong to date, and I'll give him a winning chance of, yeah. I thought 8-1 to one Dreamland represented the value. Went very quick last time out in his comeback efforts. Uh, he he had to tire, um, and he still hung on for second, and he meets super, super awesome, I think, five kilograms right off. I think this track and trip's going to suit him. 
and then the best weighted she brings grade one form into the race unfortunately there's no comments in the front of the computer form with regards to her well-being but seven eight <coughs> excuse me Clyde seven eight and nine to fight it out yeah all right interesting it's going to be a good race uh, seven eight and nine but the, uh, let's take a look at what we're doing from a betting perspective could Barbaresco follow up from that last victory or not Dreamland to worry about. Red Hot Rose, does it or doesn't it need a run? There's Daryl Marie's place accumulator. And in his PA, if you go all the way to the back, he's bankering the five. Sharapova today for 288 Rand. Right, pick six time. Let's do this. Take a bet. Winner number, number handicap. This is at this 96 level. It's over 1,200 metres. A field of seven runners at this point in time. When we recorded this on Friday, the market had Cold Hard Stare as the favourite at 33 to 10. Number four, What a Honey at 7 to 2. And then you've got 4 to 1 about number one, Winter Greeting. But it doesn't end there because the market's got quite a lot of horses congested. In fact, they're all quoted, yeah. I'll start with you, Mr. Marie. Pick six, I believe you've worked at this one. Yeah, I did. Today, and so. I only went two runners here, Clyde. What's, oh, okay. What price is number six? Mythical Dream, please. Mythical seven. Second seven last. Seven one. Yeah, second last in the yeah, market. Yeah, she's my topic. Um, okay. Last time out, she was basically dropped in from a, the worst of the draws. Turfantine inside track. She was run off her feet. Um, penultimate start. I don't know if you recall that race, Clyde, but when Gavin switched the whip, she absolutely took off in the final 50 meters. And from what I saw on from that effort, she's going to love the 1200. So now she's got the one draw on the inside track. She's been victorious twice of a year before. And she's gained 1,200. So I'm really keen to see how she goes. We're actually very excited. I think at 7-1, I'm, I'm going to be having a nibble. Uh, I'll back up with Water Honey now. How well has this mare done? Uh, well, recently turned mare. Uh, last time out against the boys, she traveled oh so sweetly in the race. Um, Lots she handier goes, than normal. She loves, she loves this inside track. She's got a beautiful turn of foot. And I think the two of them will fight it out. So okay. four and six for me, yeah, preference right. for the six. Interesting. All right. So those two for Daryl. Darren, how do you see it? I saw it more open than that. I think all the runners have a chance. You know, Emerald Princess, um, she's coming out fresh over a distance short of her best. But she has placed in a, a feature uh, behind a Lula's star that was quite decent three runs back. Uh, what a honey and second breath. There's nothing between them on form. Now, second breath actually beat what a honey one and three quarter lengths, um, three runs back, and then ran second behind Miss Daisy. I thought that sort of form, second breath comes into the race with a big chance. Okay. So open for you. Daryl's worked out to pick six, though. He's gone with 1,056 Rand Perm. And in some cases, uh, two horse races. You'll see the first leg just four and six. Then 2, 3, 4, then 8, 11, 12, 13. Then 1 and 7 in race 7. He makes it those two to battle it out. Crimson Princess and Apache Fighter. Then the field in the second last leg. And the last leg of the pick six. If we're running, we're shouting River Corral race number three. And the five, Sharapova. Here they go, 1600 meters. It's a handicap at the 75 level and there are a handful of horses here that certainly have got chances friday the market saw this napoleon favorite 18 to 10 for tony peter second choice brett crawford's got that horse nothing else matters seven to two and sean terry's got the one turbo powers at five to one then you get five to one about moolah man and there are a few others mr burrows where are you drawing the line here uh one two three and four for me uh, i like a bit of turbo power I think he's going to love this step up to a mile. Uh, the furthest he went was 1,400 meters where he got up late to win. His comeback run was good enough. Uh, Muller man, the 1,450 previously, he was staying on. Um, it all depends if he sees out the mile. Napoleon, very consistent form. He'll be in the first three once again. And then nothing else matters. I see he's dropping in trip. I thought best over 18 but he will be flying home late. Others to consider a horse like Vesuvia racing off his last winning mark and Elusive Swan got a chance. So Turbo Power, uh, probably my first choice in a very open race. 
Well, his likely race is a, what is he, a four year old? Um, his, you know, his last start, if you have a look, was back in September, you know, only beaten a couple of lengths. Didn't your uncle own a horse or have a horse called Turbo? What was it? Tur Turbo Star. Turbo Star, that's right. Yeah, James actually. Marie. James Marie. Turbo Star. It was Star, a good horse, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a, yeah, very good. Funny horse. enough, you know, Clyde, Sharon Cotson. Yes. Rode Turbo Star in a ladies' race. Jeez. And yeah. uh, she got beats on him. <laughs> and I think he ended up winning 10 odd races. Um, Is that so? Yeah. But um, he actually won in Bloemfontein on the Monday and he went to Newmarket Night Racing on Tuesday. And won again. Yeah. Yes, I remember um, being a good horse. Yeah. yeah, Claude, Napoleon's a very tricky customer. I mean, if Muzi is able to time his run perfectly, uh, you can see him winning. He's mm. in good form, but he is a tricky customer. I actually like the fact that nothing else matters is coming back to a mile. One of his better runs on the half halt have to, has to be over the 1450 on the classic track. So he'll be rattling home. You know, James has got this yard in cracking form at the moment mm. on the half halt. And then Moolah Man, have a look on debut. Mr. Pettigrew put him over 1450. So that has to indicate that he was of the opinion that this horse wasn't a sprinter. So I'm keen to see how he goes over the mile. So I'm mm. not going to separate numbers two, three, and four. Okay, if I do, if nail my colors to the most, I don't know, Clyde. Just box. Yes, two, nail three, it, nail it. No, no. We want you to nail it. Not, don't don't no, hesitate. No, I'm not going to. Well, you'll know if, you. uh, if Dreamland comes out earlier, then you know where Moolah Man stands. Give you some sort of chance. Okay, we've got a jackpot for you. You've heard now from both guys. And Mr. Burrows has gone horses, as you can see, in that snapshot. Have a look at it. So you can snap away with your uh, scan as by scanning that, that QR code. And you can take it for whatever amount you can afford. That's the jackpot today. Race number six on the card is a Pinnacle Stakes. It is over the mile. It's a tab rugby Pinnacle Stakes. Very good field and field that lines up. Yeah, this is a, what would you call this? A preparation for the end of the month. Uh, Allied Steel Road on a mission mile, charity mile. This is, the, I think it's that stepping stone race where a few of them that are in here will participate at the end of the weekend. Market Malek, Darren is top of the boards at nine to two. This is a really tough race, Clyde. You've got a lot of horses making their seasonal reappearance as Safe Passage, Bully Bowlegs, Melek, Meridius, Electric Gold, all coming back from last season. Then you've got a horse like Atticus Finch, who's in, entered for the Summer Cup. He looks a, a real classy type of horse with 50 kilos on his back. Um, I really struggled here. Union Square. Uh, steals off Alamite on gin strike, ruled by force. Um, there's a lot of horses with chances here. Yeah, that it does appear to be that way. And as you quite rightly say, making their um, appearance for the first time in a while, it's a pre stepping stone into the mile later at the end of the month. But is there one that um, is fit yeah. enough and that can run away from them? Um, yeah, I don't know, Clyde. Uh, Duke of Sussex. Mm. He didn't stay the 2000. So coming back to Amal, third run off to arrest Clyde. Blinkers go on. Now that could, that could what would Sheldon Peter say, extricate. Extricate, yes. Something out of him. Give him a little bit of life. 52 to shoulder. I mean, we saw Cabello ride the feature race double last weekend. Yes. So I think he could improve on his latest efforts. Um, Atticus French, like they're in touch on, he holds a Betway Summer Cup entry. Um, Alec Laird, a few weeks or months back, said he was of the opinion that there was never much separating himself and, or Atticus French and um, Billy Bolex, Clyde. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting been, yeah. to see on Saturday, Atticus Finch has got an 8 kilogram pull. Sure. And... He's only got 50 to, sh uh, to shoulder. And then he's the he's horse to beat. going to push forward from a wide draw. I'm not worried about that draw whatsoever. He's mm. going to go handy. I'm and the sure track, not a problem. Caden's been told, just get yourself handy and don't race wide. Uh, so he, I'm going to be leaning towards him. Uh, he's a very nice horse. He's done nothing wrong since being gelded. And now he's progressing. So inside track? horses, no, don't no worry problem. about the inside track. Well, he's 11 or 2 at the moment. I like Clyde. based on what you just said. Watch how electric gold goes. Being gelded, um, he's he's also another horse on his day. He can Shooty. perform with the, close to the best of them. Yeah. So 
and a horse like Union Square for the Gin Boys. You know the Gin Boys club? Yes, yes, yes. Third run off the rest. Alamite's on. Put a line through his second run. On his comeback effort, a lot of people will be tipping him first. Sure. Are well, there are a few in here. Meridius, Union Square, Rule by Force, all with bigger missions in my humble opinion. Lovely horses too. But maybe Daryl's hit the nail on the head yet too. A horse like Atticus Finch, bottom weight. If there wasn't anything separating him and Billy Bolegs when Alec had both and he's got eight kilos pull on the other, well then he may well be the right horse. What are we doing in a race like this, betting-wise? Let's talk to the boys. We're putting up the following bet. It's a Daryl Marie final jackpot, race of six, seven, eight, and nine, where we're going 8, 11, 12, 13 by one and seven by field. And then we're going three and five at the back. That's our jackpot, last jackpot of the day. Well, the last race is the LA France, and uh, this is over 2,200 meters, this particular event. When recording on Friday, the market had Apache Fighter as the favourite at two to one. And I, Darren, on your side, I think this was one of your one of your strikes or one of your bets, or you liked it a lot. Am I correct? You there, Darren? You're on mute. Yes, Clyde. I thought Apache Fighter the right horse in the race. Um, I went back four runs. I thought there was a cracking effort in the Spook Express behind Red Maple. And she's had the two comeback runs over 18 and 2,000 meters, two close-up seconds. She's got a handy galloping weight on her back. This is a competitive field. You've got plenty with chances, but she is my outright first choice. Mm. You really obviously are hoping now that, um, I mean, Roy Magnus has been a bit quiet, hasn't he, this day? Yeah. I'm sure he's hoping he can start striking form this weekend. Uh, in this race, he should, Clyde, because... He should. Uh, the two of his should dominate over here. I mean, Crimson Princess Clyde, if you ever look at the best weighted column, I know she's earned a rating over less, but she's a kilo and a half best in over Apache Fighter. Mm. Uh, Crimson Princess, take note, uh, there is an equipment change. Mm -hmm. Now that she's trying the extra, they've taken the blinkers off. Uh, she's by Silvana out of her, <coughs> excuse me, Clyde, a street crime here. So, you know what, if she's more effective over this trip, She's going to give her stable companion something to think about. But uh, there's no doubt Muzi's had the choice of rides and he's opted for Apache Fighter. Now, Apache Fighter on her day, um, she's more than capable. She's uh, got a lot in her favor. But I've seen this fully run around in the past and uh, she does, uh, she, she can be quirky or meh mm. and temperamental at times. But. Um, she looks like she can crack it with 54 to shoulder. This is a perfect race for her. Okay. So I'll, I'm going to be in Darren's camp. I'm going to tip seven from one of you. All right. So it's Roy Magna to do it, to do the honor and uh, fighting this out. Hopefully it will be Apache Fighter that wins the running of the LA France. This is our selection for the feature race of the day that comes up now. And you've heard it. We're going with number seven, Apache Fighter.